Hello students, in this tutorial we're going to be looking at how you convert from a star to a delta. Previously we saw how you convert from a delta to a star and we looked at a number of examples. So this time around we're going to see how we do the opposite, converting from a star to a delta. Then we're going to see one example. Now we have um, a shape of a delta here and the shape of a star here. Now of course if you're trying to convert from something that looks like this, into a delta the first thing just like before we're going to start by redrawing our star into our delta or a delta around that star once we've done that then we'll see is a relationship or a formula that we're going to be using so the notation that you use for your formula really depends on the letters that you assign so let's see let's say we have a shape like this in this case what you see is that i already have my delta in blue drawn around my star and my star is the one in yellow there so this label here is a b so from here of course notice that it's like i've just drawn this delta around the star which is in yellow here now once you've done this what you're trying to do is the assumption here is that you know what ra is you know what ra b and you also know what ra c but now you're trying to determine what ra2 is what ra1 is and also what R3 is. So you're trying to convert these values which are given for the star, you're trying to find the equivalent values in terms of that delta there. Now how do you find it? Well this is just a simple trick that you have to um, that you have to visualize. It starts with the type of letters that or characters that you're going to assign here. It doesn't matter what you have. Let's say you wanted to find R1 here. So if you're trying to find what R1 is, all you have to see is that R1 stands at these two points or should I say R1 relates to RA and RC and RB is way at the far end there. So once you have that in mind, the first thing that you do is multiply all the resistors that are making up that star, not all together, in pairs. So you're going to start with RA, multiplying RB, then add it to again RA, but now multiply it with the other one, which is RC. Then plus, the, notice that the only pair I haven't multiplied now is R, B, and C. So this is going to be R, B multiplying R, C. So I'm multiplying R, A times R, B, R, A times R, C, R, B times R, C. And then the only difference is what you're going to be dividing with. If you're trying to find R, 1, you divide it by the resistor which it has nothing to do with or which is at the far end. In this case, it is directly related to RA and RC, so we're going to divide by RB. So it's just a trick that you can use to remember uh, the formula for uh, the star to delta. Say you wanted to find R2. When you look at it, again, the numerator is the same in this case, so we're still going to have RA times RB plus RB times RC plus RA times RC. So it's still going to be the same thing. RA, RB, RA. RC, the order doesn't matter here since multiplication and addition. So, of course, then plus RB, RC. The difference is what we divide with. Since we are finding R2, R2 is right here. When you look at it, it is directly related to RA and RB, but it has nothing to do with RC, or RC is way at the far end. So, divide by that RC. So, this will divide by RC. The next thing now is to find R3. So to find R3, we first go back to the diagram. Let's see where R3 is. R3 is here. It is directly related to RC and RB, so we'll be dividing by RA. The numerator is still the same. RA multiplying RB plus RA multiplying RC plus RB multiplying RC. Then divided by, again, we're finding R3 here related to RB and RC directly and RA is way at the far end there so we divide by RA this time so this would divide by RA so this is how we find the resistors R1 R2 and R3 again the letters that we use here will depend on the assignments that we've made in this case now let's look at a simple example just to help us understand how we use these methods Let's look at this example. In this example, 
we want to determine the equivalent resistance viewed from this end. So we want to find the equivalent resistance of our circuit. Now, of course, the direct method of just using parallel and series connection will be difficult because in this case, how do you determine the behavior of these resistors here? Are they in series or are they parallel? Because of that, we want to utilize what we've just described, the star convert being converted into a delta. So when you look at these three resistors here, we want to see that these can actually be drawn such that they are making a star. So, so we can use these three resistors, make them into a star. So the junction, of course, the meeting point being this point here. So if I was to redraw that, look at what we have. So we now have the first resistor, the 10 ohm resistor being here. And then I can redraw this such that now this really looks like a star. So I can put the other resistor here. And then we can do this so that it looks more like that star that we expect to have. This is a 5 ohm. This is a 4 ohm. So from here, now this looks like a star. So notice that around this, we can now make our delta. So we're going to have something starting from here, a resistor here, coming this side. And then we'd have another resistor here, going down. And then we'd have a third resistor completing our delta being here, and then going in this way. From here, the labels that were assigned here will completely depend up to us. So let's say this is our R1, this is our R2, and this is our R3. So to find these values, let's say we wanted to find R1. So R1 has everything to do with these two resistors here. So since it has, it is directly related to the 5 and the 10 ohm resistor, we'll be dividing by the 4 ohm resistor here. But you know how the numerator goes, we'll multiply these in pairs, of course. So you can say 5 by 4, so have 5 by 4, plus 5 by 10, then plus, then we'll have the remaining one, which is 10 by 4. Then we'll divide by, by the 4 ohm resistor. Since it's R1, we'll divide by 4 ohm. So from here, this is going to be 20 here, plus 50, plus 40, then divided by 4. So when you look at that numerator, the numerator is going to be 110 divided by 4. So from here, if we calculate this, we get R1 as 27.5 ohms. We can find R2. So the numerator is the same. It's still going to be 5 by 4, 5 by 10, and 5 by uh, 5 by 4, 5 by 10, and then 10 by 4. So it's still going to be that 110. The difference is that denominator. So since we are finding R2, R2 is directly related to the 5 and the 4. So we'll be dividing by the 10 ohms, the one which is the other side. So here we'll be dividing by 10. R2 comes out as 11 ohms. And then we move on to R3. The numerator again, still the same. But the denominator, now we're finding R3. R3 is here, directly connected to the 10 ohm and the 4 ohms. So we'll be dividing by the 5 ohms. So our denominator is going to be 5 ohms. And if we do the division now, R3 comes out as 22 ohms. So we now have R1, 2, and 3. Now look at how our circuit will simplify to be. So first, we can start with what we have this side. What doesn't do with our star? Our, yeah, our star. So we have this here. And the other resistor coming down here. So our delta was, we created our delta starting from this point, a resistor being here. And then we had another resistor here. And then this is what we used to create, to create our delta. So in place of this, we had... So instead of this, instead of that that star, in place of it, we're going to create, we're going to substitute our delta. So let's put our delta there. Our delta is this. So we have a resistor here, R1. And then this side, we have R2. 
and then this side we have uh, this is r3 and then this is r1 r2 is this side so we'll remove the star in place of the star we'll only have the delta so this side we had r2 so remember r1 was 27.5 and then r2 r2 we found 11 ohms and then r3 r3 we found 22 ohms and of course as before this was 10 this was 8 and this was 9 ohms so now let's see how we continue now observe that the 10 ohm resistor and the 27 ohm resistor are now in parallel to each other justification being that they stand on the same points this side and also we know to say this is considered as one point so they are standing on the same two points so these two resistors are in parallel to each other we can say the same thing about the 22 ohms and the 8 ohm resistor these two are also in parallel to each other so let's combine them let's start with the 10 and the 27 so since there are only two we we'll multiply then we we'll divide by their sum which is 10 plus 27.5 so from here if we do this the combination here comes out as a 7.33 ohms then we we'll move on to the 8 and the 22 so we have 8 by 22 divided by the sum 8 plus 22 in this case this comes to give us 5.87 ohms so our circuit now will have the 9 ohms on top then we'll have the parallel connection of those two resistors the this was the which two were that the 10 and the 20 27.5 and we know to say those two give us 7.33 so you have 7.33 here and then again the parallel connection of the 8 and the 22 and then of course we still have r2 here on its own this side so once this is done once this is done uh, this of course was uh, 5.87 so we have 5.87 here so this R2, R2 we found 11. So I have 11 ohms here. And this, this is 9 ohms. So these two are in series with one another. So we can just directly add them. So when we add those, we get 13.2. So since they're series, we are adding. So now our circuit will have the 9 here. In this line, we'll have those two which were in series. And that's 13.2. And then we see that 13.2 is parallel to the 11. So now these two are parallel. We can combine them again, which will be 13.2 by 11 divided by the sum 13.2 plus 11. And if we do this, this gives us... So this will give us 6 ohms. So that now our circuit becomes the 9 ohms here in series with the 6 ohms. So that in the end, our equivalent resistance altogether now will be the series connection of 9 and 6, which of course will just be addition. And this comes to give us 15 ohms. So this becomes the equivalent resistance in our circuit. Now guys, hope you are able to follow. In the next tutorial, we're going to look at how to use the, the current divider and the voltage divider rules. See you guys in the next tutorial.